Now this update's gonna get pretty confusing, so I suggest getting ready to sit back, grab a snack, and relax. Disclaimer, this video will not be super complicated and include things like using clocks and same contraptions, etc. You can go to Shadow Facts for that. Now let's get on to explaining so you 10 IQ Rust players can make some cool contraptions. In all seriousness, this video is for players that just want a simple door closer or a cool trap base, basically PvPers and casual Rust players. I will be structuring this video in four different parts. The scrap it takes to research them, the ingredients in all of the components, how to find the components, how to use timers and switches on doors, all the different power sources that are in the game and how to use them, some example of traps that you can use to get some cheeky loot, and also a cool little trick you can use to close all of your doors at once. And also at the end of the video I will include a little short talk about what I think will happen to the game based off this update and if it's good or not for the game and just basically my opinion on it. Alright, so now I'm going to be going over the components for uh, this update and I'm also going to be telling you guys what tier they are. Alright, so all these components right here, the pressure pad, small rechargeable battery, all of the kind of blockers slash memory cells, all of these kind of like square looking things, <laughs> uh, all these switches, the door controller, the splitter, the large solar panel, and the laser detector, those are all tier one, everything here is tier one, and all of these three are actually going to be tier two, so the and switch, large rechargeable battery, and the counter. Now the generator and the wire tool you cannot craft, nor can you research. Alright, so after uh, opening 100 crates, uh, these crates that you see on the street, there's lots of components on the floor. Uh, these are the components that I've gotten now. These are so with the large solar panel, they are pretty common. Um, you're probably going to find them if you're just farming on the road regularly, but you only get the blueprint. So you can only get the blueprint, you don't actually get the physical item. Okay, so and with switches, I got a lot of switches, but there are a lot of different switches, so this doesn't make sense. So I got four XOR switches, I've gotten three AND switches, and two regular switches, which are probably going to be the ones that you're using. I got two electrical branches, a, a, a blocker, a counter, three root combiners, a laser detector, and uh, do two door controllers. Now, door controllers are pretty common. Um, I got them more when I did this another time. So, the electrical components are pretty common. Uh, I did not find any power sources, so those are going to be more rare. Now, uh, keep in mind this is only in these crates, which I believe are the only way to get these. This is what I got from opening 100 of these. So basically, if you want to get a lot of the components that you are going to be using, just farm the roads and get the crates. If you don't want to get any barrels, that's totally okay. Just get the crate. Crates are going to be what you want to get if you want to do cool contraptions and things like that. And, uh, yeah. All right, so now we're going to be doing, going over the doors. Now, there are four different methods of doors that I'm going to be showing you how to open. First, I'm going to start off with the timer. Now, the timer, basically, the method is you can set the timer whatever you want to. I have it to five seconds. So what you do is you press E, activate it. You can run out your door. And then uh, after five seconds, it closes it behind you. Um, this is good for door campers or anything like that of that nature that you think might be outside. You can set this up. And yeah. All right, so how to build it now this wire will go into the bottom of the door controller which is the electric input or sorry the timer which is the electric input and then it goes out into the door controller now the thing with door controllers is it might get a little confusing because you do actually have to pair them now pairing you're gonna have to do with a new door so basically let me just take off this door real quick it's red right now you see it says hashtag pair door this may be different because this is a staging so it'll say something like pair door now when you place down your door after placing down your door controller there make there cannot be a code lock or well, the code lock has to be unlocked now if i make the code lock and i try and pair it it doesn't work i'm cl clicking e, it won't work now if you unlock it real quick you can pair it and then you can lock it again it will be green that's how you know it is paired okay so now uh as i said it will open and everything like that you can switch the timer to whatever you want um i don't see why you'd want to go too high with this but you know you can you can make it whatever you you want all right oh god um all right, so starting off, you're going to get your power source. You're going to place this down uh, wherever you'd like. Wires can go through walls without any trouble. And select your power input, having your wire in the hand. Just simply press E. Now, this will basically show you how far you can go. See, if I go <clears throat> if I go too far, which this is very far, I don't see why this would be a problem. 
you cannot go any further. It leaves you almost. And you also have to be playing it on the surface. Placing it on a surface. Um, yeah, so that's uh, basically how far you can put it and everything like that. Now, I did have it going up on all the way around. But what you can do is you can place your door controller just right here. So now you're going to get your door. Uh, it can be any door that you'd want. <clears throat> place your door. Uh, and then go ahead take your wires out. You can connect this now, but that's not what you're going to want to be doing because it will just keep the door open constantly. Uh, now, to get rid of your wires, you don't actually have to hit it. You you really can't hit it um, with really anything. It just stays there like it's can't, you can't hit it. So what you're going to have to do is hold your wire and hold right click and then it will basically get rid of it. So what you're going to do is you're going to place your timer wherever you'd like, wherever you want to have the access point. You're going to place your cord in there. Now I had it all fancy like set up and I had it nice and neat. You don't actually have to do this, but if you don't want to go crazy over the wires, you can walk through them. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can walk through them. So, all right, now let's clear this. Let's hold our right click and clear this. Oh, you have to do it from the, you can't be in it. Sorry, I was having a little bit of trouble there. So now you're going to take your power and you can't actually put it. There is a input right here, but you can't actually put the power into the output. It just won't let you. So you won't make that mistake. You put it into the electrical input. Now that's in there. You can see the light is red and it gives you the option to activate it, but nothing will happen. All right. So you're going to take your output, which is at the top of the timer, select it. Re rewire it right to the door controller. Remember to pair your door, and then you can change your timer. I'm gonna change it to four seconds. Oh, sorry. Uh, okay, there we go. You have to drag over it. All right, four seconds. Activate it. One, two, three, four, and my counting was a little off, but it'll short. It'll shut like that. That's how you use the timer. Now onto the pressure plate. Uh, this is basically the same as the timer, except uh, you have a pressure plate that you can stand on. Uh, now I have to pair that. So basically, you what you, this is good for is, you know, if you want to run straight out your base, you can do so. The door was in the way for me, but you can uh, change the way you want the door to open. You step on the pressure plate, it opens, you step off, and it automatically shuts behind you. All right, so how to build this? All right, so how to place this? So you can place your pressure plate wherever you'd like. The wires can go very long. Uh, I'm just going to place mine right in the center of this foundation right here. And then you're going to get your power source. I'm going to place my generator. And then you're going to get your door controller. Place it right next to the door. My door here, it doesn't matter what kind of door it is. As long as there's not a code lock that's locked on it, you can pair it. There you go. It can be double doors, anything you'd like. You just have to place the door controller near it. All right, take your wire, select the power output, click. You're going to have it go into the power in. And then, same as the other one, you can have your wire go all messy like, or you can make it nice. Power out will go into the door controller, which is the power in. And now, simply step on it and it will open it. That is how you do the pressure plate to the switch basically it's a very easy concept you just you hit the switch and it stays on it'll stay on as long as there's power remember there has to be power the generator you have infinite power but with other uh sources that i'll be going over later if you want to see this uh, again timestamps in the description um so you make sure make sure you don't leave these on because it will drain the power if you have a rechargeable battery um make sure you turn these off also it will leave your door open all right i'm going to take my power source place it down Take my door controller as always, place it right next. Any kind of door, as long as there's not a locked code lock. And place your, and pair your door. And then you're gonna get your switch here, place it wherever you'd like, and have the wire go from the power output into the bottom electric input. And then have your output go into the power in on the door controller. And then turn it on, that's how it works. All right, so moving on to the laser. This is a little bit of a different concept from the other ones. Um, Basically, the laser will shoot across. You can barely see it here. There, now you can see it a little there. Uh, basically, what happens is, yeah, let me close the door. You walk through in the laser when you go in between it. It'll stay on. Now, since I'm staying behind the laser, it does stay on. The door will stay open, but if I come off, it'll automatically close right away. This is a pretty fast thing, so uh, you can also open the doors. It doesn't actually matter, and it will automatically close. So if you're trying to run fast at your base, it'll open pretty fast. And then, you know, if you're running back in, it will close behind you. All right, so first you're going to take your power source that you're using, place it down. As always, take your door controller, put it right there, pair the door up. And this is what the laser detector looks like. Uh, it'll probably look different 
once the game is uh, the updates fully released. All right, so basically at places like this, and what you're gonna have to do is you want to have it if you want to have it open up like when you're walking right past you're gonna want to put a low wall and then you can place it wherever you'd like it does look like it's gonna point that way but it actually won't um this may be different as i said when it comes out so it may look properly all right so you're gonna place you can place it right up against you can place it all the way back here it doesn't matter i'm just gonna be placing it right there as you can see there it is shooting right out what you're gonna do is you're gonna have your power output now this can be a little confusing you have to go around it um <clears throat> you can't do it from back here because it doesn't stick through you have to go all the way around the wall and Look at it from the front side. Now, as I said, uh, only the one that you can fit this into will be available. So you can just right there. And then they are basically inside of each other, but uh, that doesn't really matter because if you do it from here, if you select your wire there first, it will only come up with the power out. All right, so once you have it in there, now it'll work. That is it for the doors that I will be showing in this video. All right, so now I'm gonna be going over the rechargeable batteries. Now, there are a lot of different rechargeable batteries or uh, just rechargeable sources, and there's also a bunch of sources that are forever. So um, the wire tool you can actually craft now, so it's default BP. So keep that in mind, you only need to make one. All right, so this is the large rechargeable battery. Now the way you can recharge it is you select the power in, and then you go to a solar panel or a large windmill, and just hit the power, on it and you can see it will glow up will go up as you can see it's going up all right now we're going to clear that uh basically you know standard power output goes into the uh, light and now it's powered on that's how you use it and the guard rechargeable battery can hold a lot of power more than you'd need so uh there you go all right so now the generator i'm not too sure on how these will be added into the game uh if you do have a question on how certain make the electrical circuit that you're making and you really need the generator uh, and you don't know, ask me in the description. Uh, most likely after this video goes up, I will know. It hasn't really been said how to get it yet, but I don't believe you can get the generator. So um, don't think you can really get the generator because it is infinite power. All right, so the small rechargeable battery, same thing as the large, it just holds less. There you go. Uh, but it's this still does hold about an hour, I think. I think it holds up to an hour. I'm not totally sure. But I have seen it go <clears throat> up to 56 minutes. So that it does it powers more than not enough. As long as you conserve your power. You turn it off when you don't need it. Okay, so now with the solar panel, just get your... I'm just using a light as an example. You can use anything on this. Just using an example to show you that it works. It'll be on the this side. And on here, you can see that it's on. It is again. Uh, this is a solar panel, so I'm sure many of you know this is only going to work during the nighttime, or sorry, daytime. Uh, but it will store power. So as long as it's uh, out in the daylight, you can have it on. You can have it off during the day and then turn it on during the night, and it most likely will last all night. Now the windmill. Uh, so to craft this, craft all these uh, things you're going to need for the small rechargeable battery you're just going to need 10 high quality pretty simple now the large rechargeable battery is actually a, a lot like it's it's a lot to craft it's a lot to um make a 80 high quality now that's a lot of high quality you probably just are better off going with a smaller rechargeable battery or something like a solar panel and solar panels are super easy to get so only 50 high quality and you can get yourself some really good uh power now for the windmill though the windmill has been in the game for i think um more than a year and it's finally uh, a thing now. <laughs> so it's level two, 1.5k wood, 30 high qual, three gears, and 10 sheet. So all these, all this stuff really isn't that much. And then 10 sheet metal. That's a lot of sheet metal. So if you do want to end up getting this, you cannot recycle sheet metal. As you can see, you know, sheet metal is used on the blades, I guess. I don't know. Anyways, you do want to keep your sheet metal if you want to end up crafting this thing. It takes a lot of sheet metal. All right. So basically to show how it works, I have used it. I already showed you guys with the portable battery. Just goes right in. And it works. This works 24-7. Works even in the night. Come on, game. There you go. See, it works in the nighttime. And you can pick them up with a hammer really easily. It does take some health damage. Uh, same thing with the light and the all the batteries, actually. But with the wind turbine, you know, you can't you can't pick that up. Same with, like, high walls or a quarry and stuff like that. So that's all uh, for the rechargeable batteries. If you have any questions, just ask a comment, and I will reply with an answer. So, uh, yeah.
that's it for rechargeable batteries. All right, so now I'm going to be showing you just uh, different contraptions and traps that I have uh, come up with. So just to say, I saw that people were having confusion with this, that it wouldn't work. Um, but it, it, you can, in fact, do this uh, with the... Uh, with the ladder hatch now confusion because you can't pair it right now I'm trying to pair it, but it won't work if you close the door What I found is you just have to get the entity of the actual door that operates uh, to the and it will work So then you just connect your wire and Then it works same with the garage door um, You can't pair it unless it's right next to it. So is there Any confusion about that won't pair you have to close it Right when it hits it, it can pair. So just the actual door. All right, so basically this is one of the trap-based designs that I came up with. You run in and then the door opens and the shotgun blasts you. You probably just want to put some boxes so you can't actually run into that door. Because, you know, if somebody's running full speed, they can't actually get through. And then they can just, you know, jump over or run through. Again, you want to put some boxes or shelves uh, to block people from getting in. So basically you step on it. You can't see this uh, actual plate. You can't do this with a bear rug, by the way. Um... And then you get shot. Now, I'll show you guys how I actually build this in a more open layout. All right, so to actually build this, what you're going to have to need is a door controller, a switch, wire tool, a power source, which I'm going to be using the large rechargeable battery, and a pressure plate. Just to build the base of it. You're going to have other stuff like bats, sleeping bags, and stuff like that to actually build the trap. But this is I'm showing you the electrical part. So you're going to place your door switch. Uh, you can place it on this side. Probably easier. Then you place your switch right next to it, right? Now you're gonna take your wire tool. You're gonna make sure you pair the door and it will close and you can just reopen it. You're gonna take your door controller and put it into the pressure pad. Now you wanna do this neatly so you can hide it under the sleeping bags. You just don't wanna have it stretch across because then people will know what's going on. All right, so now you're gonna take your power source and you're going to put it into the switch. And then you're gonna have your switch go into have it route pretty neatly have it go into the pressure plate right there now if you turn this on you step on it make sure this is closed if you step on it it'll open now the reason i have the switches here because you can do this without a switch but the reason you'd want to switch is so you can actually turn off the power see so your rechargeable batteries they only hold a certain amount so you want to install this you have to go a little extra mile to install this but it's really simple and it can really save you a lot of power because you can turn it on and off when you want, uh, which really helps. Uh, if you obviously have a windmill or anything like that, it won't matter. And also for gates, it does work. You just have to place it on a wall next to it. You can actually put it on the gate part. All right, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make it so you can close all of your loot room doors with the switch of one button. All right, so uh, disclaimer, you can, if you don't want to waste power, just turn this off and, you know, just turn them on. It's it's really easy. Um, and uh, basically when you, if you are getting raided or you want to close all your doors because you're getting off, you can just switch it on, which won't do anything, and then switch it off again. And then it will close all them because you don't want to be wasting power if you don't have a generator by keeping them on all day or all of the time that you're on, which would waste a, a lot of power depending on your power source. All right, so this is what the wires look like. It's actually really um, simple. It doesn't really look that complicated. It may to you, but trust me, it really isn't that complicated. All right, so to get into the build of it. All right, so I'm only gonna be doing this with three loot rooms. You can do it with as many as you want. I'm gonna show you how to make it so you can do it with as many as you want. Um, you just have to add a couple of things. Now, we're just gonna make our loot rooms here. Locked. Well, lock. you can have them unlocked, but you can't have them locked. All right, so I'm going to place it on the outside just because it's easier to do. And if you place it on the garage door, like, you, can, you can't really do that. It just says you can't deploy on door, so you're going to put it right there. That works perfectly. Make sure it's closed so you can actually uh, pair it. Because right now you can't pair it, but if you close it, it's right when that garage door gets near it, you can. So we're just going to do that. Pair it. Pair it. There you go. All right, so now I'm going to take your... Power source, which I'm just going to spawn in a generator for this. You can do it with whatever you want. Just make sure that you um, do the trick that I showed you where you don't have to use any power because you don't want to eat up all your power. So let's just create two foundations for the power. All right, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to have the switch go into one of the splitters. You can't just cut it right across. I'd like to do it neatly so it doesn't look bad. All right, so you're going to take your first power input and 
bring it along to the first door. Take the second one. There are three on a splitter. And you can just have this go below the garage door if you don't want it in the way. It doesn't matter if it is in the way. You can walk through it and do actions through it. It doesn't really matter. I imagine it would be very annoying. Alright, so you can go pretty far with these wires, so... There you go. Now, what you're going to do is you're just going to use your switch. Once you switch it on, the, all the garage doors should come up. Switch it off. It'll all come down. Now, to not waste any power, keep your switch off, which will not use any power. And then just manually open them. And when you do want to actually close them, just switch it on and switch it off. Then it will close them all. Now, the reason I have a second splitter is because if you want to do four doors... Um, let me just set that up real quick. So to actually accommodate for this, you're going to have to take one of the door controller outputs off and you're going to have to have it go up into the other splitter. And there you can just take the one that you removed, which was, I believe it was the last one. So let's just, we can, you can go all the way around, just have it go through everything. It doesn't really matter. And then it will still work. Now, if you want to have something crazy, like even more doors where you need another splitter, just do the same thing. Accommodate one output to go into another splitter. Alright, so my opinion on how this update will actually affect the game may be different from yours, but this is what's most likely going to happen. This electricity will definitely be used by probably bigger groups and solos, yes, but bigger groups will have windmills and different things like that, which will make it a lot easier. And now, obviously, clans are going to have, like, some clans might get bored and make insane contraptions that could lag out the server. I doubt it will really become a problem, but possibly on official servers. This will not ruin going deep at all if the person's kind of smart they will put the switch not in their airlock or their timer not in their airlock so you can't just open it uh you can open and use switches without be having tc access this is subject to change i'm sure but you can use switches if you don't have tc access and you don't need to authorize or anything so going deep really isn't that dead uh stop complaining now for raiding you can't actually pair a door that isn't yours you have to have the code lock unlocked uh able to pair it i've stressed this numerous times throughout the video uh so originally i thought raiding was going to be really easy and you can open up all the doors as long as you had tc but no that's not the case anymore which i'm glad they patched and raiding will not be affected really at all unless they have switches inside the base that you can open all the doors with that's the only bad thing with having a switch that can open all the doors it can like make it so somebody can just raid your entire base but something you can do before you get off is just take the wire off or take a switch off pick it up so you can't do that that could really you know that could really solve that entire problem easily this update will pro most likely in the next months uh, have stuff added to them but after a while not many people use electricity streamers and of that nature won't use it because they're looking for fast-paced pvp and they won't be worried about all this electricity crap so it's not really gonna affect that side of the game but if you're a casual player that wants to have some cool contraptions it's it's great it's not really going to ruin much for anybody and it's just a good addition overall people can express themselves creatively uh very well and i think it's gonna be really cool to see what people can do and if you guys like this tutorial please hit a thumbs up and tell me what you thought of it if you didn't like it always hit that dislike and tell me what to improve on for the next time and also go check out my other videos and also go check out my other videos and cards on the screen right now. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. And if you have any questions at all, just ask me in the comments. And also guys, disclaimer, it's like stuff is subject to change. I'm sure things are going to change. So if you have any questions or something isn't working and it looks outdated, just ask. And I'll, I'll also make a update video if it gets to the point where like everyone's confused about stuff. I will make an update video. Thank you for watching and goodbye.